basically working on the flame test and the calculations for this lab are pretty quick and they're pretty straightforward. So when you did the lab, you <clears throat> were basically just looking for what colors, uh, what color did the flame turn when you put it in. So here are just a couple examples, a couple colors you should have seen, something like this. So I'm going to start with this one. I'm just going to work up the, the results for the lithium chloride. So it's the metal, it's the lithium that's making the, um, the flame turn red. So to record on your data sheet here, you just write lithium, and you say the color of the flame is red, and then to find the wavelength, I don't know why these are all over the place, to find the wavelength range, you're just going to go down here. You can either use this chart or you can use this chart. Uh, red here, wavelength 620 to 780 nanometers. All right, so I'm going to put 620 to 780 nanometers. And then I'm going to calculate the frequency range. So I'm going to take this 620 nanometers and turn that into uh, hertz. So I'm going to take this 780 nanometers. I'm going, to, I'm going to do this twice. I'm going to do this process twice. And then after I get the frequency range, I'm going to list them. They want the put them in order of increasing frequency. So you have the lowest frequency on top. Now, if you remember, the frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional. So the longer the wavelength, the shorter the frequency. So I know that red is the longest wavelength. It's going to have the shortest frequency. So that's why I put the red one. Uh, I started with the red one, put it on top. So you can do that. You can order them first if you want to by color, or if you want to, ca uh, you know, calculate everything and then look at the frequency range and then reorganize them. That's fine too. So how do I do this this calculation? How do I convert? Oh, I'll just write it in here. So I'm going to do it for both of my numbers. It's two steps, right? So I'm, I'm what am I doing? I'm working at I'm looking at uh, 620 nanometers and um, 780 nanometers. And I want to get it into, I'm trying, trying to find the frequency. So what's new? What's new is C over lambda. And C is a constant. Right? That's the 2.998 uh, times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So this is in meters per second. But these guys are in nanometers. I have to convert first. I'm going to try to convert from nanometers to meters. So I'm going to take my uh, 620 nanometers. And there's 1 times 10 to the 9 nanometers or 1 meter, which gives me 6.20 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. I can do the same thing with uh, the 780. 780 nanometers. You can do this in your head after a certain point. I'm just going to show it to you. Nanometers are really small. So I end up at 7.80 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. Right. And then I'm going to use this equation. What's new C over lambda? Here's my C. I'm just going to plug both of those in and solve for uh, the frequency. So frequency, uh, what's new C over lambda? OK, 2.998 times 10 to the 8 meters per second divided by 6.20 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. And when I worked that out, I got like 4.8 times 10 to the 14 hertz. And when I do the same thing for the 780, I get 2.998 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So that's my C over my lambda in meters, 7.8 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. Gives me 3.8 times 10 to the 14 hertz. So my frequency range, ranges go from like the smaller to the larger, right? So I would write 3.8 times 10, 10 to the 14 to 4.8 times 10 to the 14. So that's what I would record on, on the data sheet up here. So my frequency range would be 3.8 times 10 to the 14. And then 4.8. Good. And that's in hertz. And that guy's in nanometers. And that's it. And then you do the next metal, and so on and so forth. And then uh, just make sure that at the end you put the lowest frequency on top and then to the highest frequency on the bottom. That's it.